Zeno. I'm an embroidery designer and educator. And today I'd like to share with you my take on the 1960s era suede belt. I've embroidered my suede belt on this beautiful faux suede decorator fabric. I am going to embroider the length of the fabric to the length desired for your uh, measurement. You would measure your waist if you're making it for yourself or if you're making it for a friend and add approximately six inches to the end measurement so that you can loop it through the belt loop like we've shown over here. I've also added some recycled fringe that I've cut off another belt. I purchased it at, the, at a thrift store and then you can recycle the fringe from a purchased belt. On the wrong side of the fabric, I fused on a lightweight, simple interfacing to give the fabric a little bit more body when I'm doing the embroidery. And the design selection that I chose was a beautiful scroll, kind of a folksy uh, looking design. I've actually changed the colors for my preference to kind of go with the denim. And I'd like to share with you some of my quick and easy techniques for embroidering these on your sewing machine. Over here, I've already hooped my fabric wide enough to fit in my large size hoop to make your life a little easier when you're embroidering one long length of suede fabric, you want to be able to hoop less so you, you would combine all of your designs in the biggest hoop that's available for your fabric and for the size of your belt. I have brought up my embroidery design which is on my USB stick which I inserted on my machine and I'm going to um, rotate my design 90 degrees and then copy that because there's a copy feature right above the sewing icon and that automatically adds one additional design um, so that you can embroider your, the length of your suede fabric a little qu quicker than just adding one design at a time. And now I hit the sewing feature and I'm going to scan my hoop. There's actually a scanner on this machine and it's going to take a picture of what is exactly hooped in my machine. The blue painter's tape that I've added on top of the suede fabric will help me align the long um, stitched out portion of the embroidery design so that I keep it straight and when I continue and re-hoop then it will be easier to line up on the fabric. The blue painter's tape gives you a nice, clear, visual, straight line. And I've hooped in my largest hoop for that very reason, so that I can continue my embroidery design for the long length needed to make the belt. It's really a fascinating feature to have a scanner on your embroidery machine and take a picture of what's exactly hooped. It's a great way to edit at the machine. It's a great way to design your own embroidery accessories. Okay, so now you're gonna see my scanned image, which is down at the bottom portion of the screen, because in order to connect our designs, I need something to link to. So if I didn't have any design in the hoop, then I would, it would have a hard time lining up that new design. So now I'm going to move the embroidery design. Notice how it's moving. It's moving and it's, I'm going to line it up between the blue painted tape lines. Of course I'm going to remove that tape. And there's a zoom feature which is another helpful tool. I'm going to hit that little hoop. You can magnify and see how close that they're touching right there. They're perfectly lined up. Close that part and I'll remove the tape. And we're going to stitch our first color. It doesn't always start right on the end because the black portion is the accent area that's going to attach and link the designs together. It's amazing how much you can do right at the embroidery machine.
Okay, our, our design is going to continue to stitch the next two colors, but right now I'm going to show you how to finish the belt and, con and construct it to complete the belt. Okay, so we've finished embroidering our design, and now I'm going to show you how to, um, you, you have the soft tear away that we had hooped in with the suede fabric, and you wanna gently tear the excess away from the back of the belt. If you have any sticking out, you don't wanna have it in your seams, and it just gently tears away, simple as that. And of course, the interfacing is gonna remain intact because it gives us that extra body and extra support in the belt. You can see how we can pull that apart. And I've trimmed my belt after all the embroidery was complete, but it's best to always use a uh, quilter's ruler. Make sure your edges are straight and that you're not too close to um, the embroidery when you're trimming and you're gonna be sewing these two seams together. You want the embroidery to show and not to be caught in any of the um, seams. So we will take our two lengths of fabric. We're gonna put the right sides together, same fabric. We would pin in place and go down the two, you know, the length of the fabric and leave the two ends open because that's where we're gonna add our, our fabric, um, that's where we're gonna add our ring to attach for the belt. And we're gonna go over to the sewing machine I've already um, removed the embroidery attachment and now we're going to sew the two seams together for the belt. Again, leaving the ends open so that I can insert my ring in one end and then we'll sew the, the, the other end um, with a nice finished seam. And you need to leave an opening so that you can turn the belt right side out. I've already changed my thread and changed my uh, bobbing to regular sewing thread. And we're just gonna go follow down the length of the belt. The quarter inch seam. I'm not one to use a lot of pins, so I, you know, these fabrics stay together because of the suede fabric. There you go. And we'll leave a little open at the end. And then we will fabric. And do the same for the opposite side. Again, leaving an opening towards the uh, one end so that you can turn the fabric right side out. I'll stop there and I'll back tack a little. And we'll move right towards this section, leave everything pinned in place. Go. Oh, didn't, didn't snip that, pulled it out too quick. So you can see how you leave that little opening in one area of the belt so that when you turn it right side out, you have a nice clean edge and then here's our, after we turn it right side out, it's a little hard to do right at this moment, but you'll attach the ring and sew that. I'll show you how it looks over here. I'm gonna undo the suede belt. I've used one ring for this particular belt because I think it looks nice when it's looped over, but you can see how um, the ring is attached just on the wrong side, folded over, and then I added that beautiful fringe. So that's my take on the 1960s suede belt. I hope you enjoyed it.